This video will feature a full-length match, playing as the Demogorgon, with some commentary mixed in, at key moments. I'll start the game off by setting some portals at key locations. I like to think of portals as wards from League of Legends. Just like wards, portals provide vision of an area through the Demogorgon's killer instinct mechanic. Even if survivors wind up cleansing the portals, doing so wastes their time and puts them at risk of being ambushed. So whether they're destroyed or left alone, either way, it works in the killer's favor. Next, I'll travel to each of my portals to activate them. I'm focusing my portal placement around my totem because I know the survivors are looking for it right now. It's about two minutes into the game, and I haven't run into anybody. No generators have gone off either. Oh well, that just gives me more time to set up. Well, it's about time I found one. I wasn't sure if she was going to juke my shred or not, so I hesitated there. I fainted left to make her think I was heading for the pallet entrance, which forced her to run to the right. This gave me enough time to climb through the window and land a hit. Looks like two of my portals were cleansed during that chase. Not a big deal though. Better for the portals to be destroyed than for the generators to get worked on. I'm not exactly thrilled you didn't bring any ice cream, Steve. Survivor sapping my totem. <laughs> A nice dead heart by Steve. Whoever just cleansed my totem, congratulations. Consider yourself the obsession. You break my totem, I'll break your bones. This is the incorrect way to run the rock wall loop as killer. I'll have to mind game the survivor to end this quickly. Putting aside my desire to exact revenge, I broke the chase with Steve earlier to maintain pressure on multiple survivors. Letting any of them get comfortable for too long is how generators get done quickly. Instantly unhooked. That happens a lot when fast traveling with Demogorgon, but I know I saw someone near this generator before the portal got destroyed. Darn, I should have done a quick sweep of the area before putting the portal down. Hopefully it comes in handy later. Ah, I thought I could hit her before she turned the corner. No need to risk pouncing when she's that close. You're too late, Steve. Unless you brought me a triple scoop of cookie dough ice cream. I'm not letting her go. Yeah. 
I'm not going to wander too far because I know Steve is lingering somewhere nearby waiting to save Nancy. I'll act like I'm going off to patrol, then tunnel back to the basement. Perfect timing. But what's this? He's going for the save anyways. Does he have borrowed time? <laughs> now this is a tricky scenario. Originally, I was going to wait for borrowed time to expire and then down Nancy. But the moment she entered the locker, I realized she probably had the head-on and inner strength perks. And given that she's the obsession, I'm pretty sure she also has Decisive Strike. So if I try to open the locker, Decisive Strike will stun me, and then she'll enter the locker again to stun me with head on. And if I don't open the locker, she'll heal herself with inner strength and just wait there for an indefinite period of time. This truly is a lose-lose situation, but eating the stun is the most time efficient option here. Aw, she messed up her stun. She didn't wait long enough for the first stun to expire, so the second one didn't take effect. That mistake will cost her her life. Ah! Time to start patrolling again. I'll just set up a portal over... oh, never mind. Looks like they're going for a basement save again. I've got a score to settle with you, totem toucher. This is where you murdered my totem in cold blood. And now... This is where I murder you. I'll head back to this generator and get some use out of Pop Goes the Weasel. Criminal's been let off the hook. If I hurry, I can still catch him. He threw that pallet down fast. He could definitely have gotten a loop or two if he'd made use of the window. sure I held my shred until it was clear he was vaulting. A lot of survivors run decisive strike nowadays, and I know it's been less than a minute since this guy's been unhooked, so I won't risk picking him up right now. I'll set a portal here and come back for him later. It took longer than I thought to land a hit on Steve. I should have forced Claudette off the generator first. Steve probably thinks I'm chasing Claudette right now, but he doesn't know about the portal I set near Jake earlier just for this occasion. You probably could have made it to the pallet if you weren't so keen on waving that flashlight in my face. Ah! 
now to find... Oh, well, there she is. I should have remembered she had Sprint Burst from earlier. I barely saw her all game, though. A little mind game was all that was necessary for that hit. Not gonna lie, I'm pretty mad about that hatch stealing my 4k. But anyways, that's a wrap for this match. Some key takeaways would be to use portals like wards to keep an eye on areas of interest, use portals to apply pressure to multiple survivors around the map, use shred to end chases faster, and if you play survivor, ditch the flashlight and try bringing an ice cream cone instead. So thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, make sure to subscribe for future content.